years after receiving a full presidential pardon last night. In a statement, the White House said the president has pardoned General Flynn because he should never have been prosecuted. General Flynn should not require a pardon. He is an innocent man. Even the FBI agents who interviewed General Flynn did not think he was lying. So here to react Aaron Elmore, executive director of USA Strong, and Mark Halperin, political analyst. Uh, so I'll be Secretary of Agriculture, where he'd like to see one of his allies, uh, a black woman, a member of Congress, be named to that slot in order to start seeing more diversity at the top of this incoming government. And Aaron, I'll come to you. What are your thoughts here on this, the kind of remarks by Jim Clyburn? And obviously, we know that the Democrats are obsessed with identity politics. Um, it seems to be uh, much ado about nothing. Um, the continuation of their of their march towards making sure that people are picked not by the uh, context of their character, but perhaps the color of their skin and their actual gender. Uh, what are your thoughts here? Two things: swamp and virtue signaling. That's all we see. This is basically Obama's third term. So get ready for that. We see John Kerry as the climate czar who just bought a $12 million house on Martha Zindler. So we know that he's not that concerned about the environment. Um, and Janet Yellen, I mean, a blast from the past. All they talk about is the first immigrant appointed to X, the first woman appointed to Y, the first Hispanic. This is virtue signaling at its finest. And I think in these positions of such national and international importance, we should be looking at resumes and qualifications as opposed to skin color and gender, because that simply creates a bigger divide. Right. Now, switching gears a little bit, want to talk about where the Trump campaign laid out uh, more evidence of fraud they say took place in the elections. Want to take a listen to this and come back to you guys. Curve. With all these spikes, can you calculate how, how, how much of a vote that accounted for for Biden and how much for Trump? Close to 600,000. I think our, our figures were about 570 some odd thousand that uh, all those spikes represent over time. For Biden? Correct. And how much for Trump? Uh, I think it was a little over 3,200. <laughs> How about that? So, Aaron, what do you make of this? Obviously, I think you'd be uh, people huddled around the Thanksgiving table. They're going to either be arguing about masks or they're going to be arguing about the vote. Um, what are you saying about, about these issues around your Thanksgiving table? And what do you think most Americans are looking at right now? Well, out of respect for my 90-year-old father-in-law and my 87-year-old mother-in-law, and in the interest of staying married, we are avoiding politics and shifting all of the conversation to my seven-year-old son. Having said that, that hearing with Rudy Giuliani, Giuliani was pretty telling. But what we need here, we have the court of public opinion, we have the general public at large, and we have the mainstream media, and everyone is clamoring for some sort of massive smoking gun here. The clock is really ticking, and the mainstream media is treating every conservative like a tenfold hat wiring crazy. So we're really needing that smoking gun. I know Rudy Giuliani and his team are working really hard, but we need some sort of substantive uh, evidence here to get all of those various factors off our back. And we can say, okay, here is the golden plate of evidence and now President Trump gets a second term. And that's what I think is needed or else we're going to usher in Joe Biden and it is going to be what it is. Right. And Mark, to you about.